doing a little paddock move this morning with the bulls. We got the uh, sheep in the background there, and we're not back fencing. So today we're going to be going on to Eastern Gamma Grass. Welcome everybody to Great Judy's Regenerative Ranching channel, and uh, the bulls are pretty happy here to be on this stuff. This is uh, an Eastern Gamma Grass field that, that, of course, this early in the spring, it's got a lot of fescue in it and clover. And uh, the purists, you know, they, they burn their fields. That's fine. Um, that's one of the things you do with Eastern Gamma Grass is you can burn it in early spring and it actually sets back the cool season grasses, your fescue and whatnot. And uh, I used to do that down here. I used to burn this field and I have a lot of bare dirt between my rows of gamma because it was planted with a corn planter. And then I got, you know, go into winter time and I'm like, well, I've got, you know, there's all together, there's about 16 acres of gamma grass down here and I wasn't getting any grazing off of it. And I'm like, you know, this fescue and orchard grass and clover in this gamma is not such a bad thing. Not when you can open up another 16 acres for a winter stockpile. And so that's what we've done. There's still gamma in here, and you'll see it here about the 1st of uh, May. This is the 1st of April. Um, it's in here still. It's just that the cool seasons come on first. And I'm kind of tickled to have some something down here in this bottom to graze, because where else would we do right now? So here we, you know, you might say all through winter, and uh, you know, here we are in the spring flush, and we're out here grazing. If this was solid gamma, you wouldn't have any grazing in here. It'd just be, you know, well, if it was solid gamma, you'd probably be burning it, and uh, you just have bare dirt. But you know, I like to capture solar energy as many uh, months of the year as possible. I like to have something green out there collecting solar energy. And uh, there go the sheep, Ben and Isaac, or the dogs. The dogs are following them in there. The dogs just have a, a really rompous time when you move the sheep. They're just so excited. They make a circle through the sheep, and they're running around, wanting a little pet. The young dogs, anyway. The old dogs don't pay any attention to you. That's a pretty sight. Got your red cattle on green grass flanked with white sheep and guard dogs on a beautiful April morning. This is the first morning we've had where it was 60 degrees and we woke up this morning. So, yeah, we're in spring now and uh, we're trying to do a concert marriage here of the, uh, the bulls and keeping a, a distance between the bulls and the cow herd. So the cows... We moved them this morning. They're across that road about a half a mile from here. Tonight, they're going to be within a quarter mile of each other, but we're going to be bringing them through here. But we don't want these bulls anywhere close to our cows. I just don't want a chance of one getting in and having a bunch of winter calving. I don't want to do that. So we're going to be bringing the cows around this mob. They're going to be about a mile west here, and then we're going to circle around. On the other side of that creek, by that time, this herd will be behind me. So we're kind of playing keep away. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do here. Uh, just where they can't smell each other. Because if a cow's in heat and a bull can smell it, uh, they're, they're going to do everything in their power to get over to, to, to service that cow. That's just nature kicking in. And uh, but this is a, this is the, uh, the dead gamma you can see down in there. And so I... I you know, the cows, I'm sorry, the bulls are getting a little bit of it. You can see what it looks like when they've grazed it. That's all gamma grass, that dead stuff. Well, they didn't eat it all, but they got a little bit of it. And uh, it's probably helping with the manure pats. Let's look at this manure pot right here. Oh, yeah. See that? It's got my nice little pond in it. I love that one. That's, that's a beaut. I noticed a few of them are a little bit runny, but, you know... We're grazing, we're trying to buy a little time here. We've got them in here fairly tight with the sheep and they're only being moved once a day. And so they are taking the plants down a little bit shorter. And just remember this quote, you can overgraze. And that's what we're doing right here. We're overgrazing, we're taking the green plants down shorter than I like. But you know what? When you overgraze, just don't come back. You can't come back until it's fully recovered. 
okay so we won't be back in here until these plants are eight nine ten inches tall and we know that we we've we've got that marked down that we've you know we've overgrazed this paddock i've got it on my day timer and uh we just have to monitor this and make sure we don't get back too soon i was going to show you this some people are asking about the sheep the sheep mineral um this is the free choice cafeteria style mineral i love this thing we're getting ready to put our mineral in this morning uh, i'm gonna move these over so i can lift up this flap hold on here uh, we do use a company called free choice enterprises sce and uh that's what you got so you got uh, eight boxes tell that's one that we need to put in this morning selenium and uh what's crazy folks one of these is copper and sheep can regulate copper the problem you get in with copper on sheep is when you put it in a cattle mineral in other words it's all mixed together it's in there at way too high concentration for sheep and but just giving them pure copper the, sh the sheep won't intentionally take too much copper they'll regulate themselves but sheep I, it's been proven sheep need a little bit of copper and uh it actually helps with their parasite resistance um but we're, the boys are coming back here with the posts and the reels and we're going to put these minerals in here in a minute and uh, they do come in 25 pound bags and we're trying to keep keep up with it it's really wet out here and so i've got a a, a rock pad right here this has got about 15 tons of rock there's eight tons on this side of the fence and you can see the rock over there. There's eight tons on that side. And this is an old terrace. And they used to crop this. They terraced this field. Keep the water out of the bottom and kind of guide the water off on the ends. It lets them plant their crops sooner in the spring. But, of course, we've never worked this field. Not, don't have any plans on it. Um, this is the uh, water. So this is a gravity flow. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's gravity. I was going to say siphon. It's not siphon. It's hooked to a hydrant. And uh, there's a little pond up that valley up there. You can see the dam on it. I trenched the line down here. So when the, the sheep or cattle are in that paddock over there, they can drink. And when in this big field down here, this one water tank serves this whole bottom. And so we spider, we use spider web or, you know, wagon wheel, whatever you want to call, around this field. And they always come back to this water point to get them a drink. That's the way it works. Man, it's a pretty sight. You like to see animals eating, feeding themselves. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scene. It's a whole lot better than unrolling a bale of hay. <laughs> We've done a little bit of that, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just one of those things, you know, you, you, you make it through the winter, and then you just hope and pray you have a nice spring, and we have, and uh, it's gotten warm now, and so the, you know, you get those really bad days in the wintertime, and it makes you wonder, you know, if it's ever going to get spring, but it always does, and it just makes you appreciate it that much more. I wanted to show you what our sheep have done. I'll call my dogs over here. Yeah! Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, here they come. <laughs> There's a couple of them dogs I can get my hands on. These are young dogs. and You know, I just want them to get used to me. There's two dogs in there we can't touch. They're, they're just older dogs. They never let you touch them. Anyway, this is what the sheep are doing to the multifer rose bush. That multifer rose bush, folks, is having a hard time. People say, well, she, you know, you got to have goats that can tow brush. Well, they do, but uh, sheep will do it just as well. And uh, the only thing a sheep can't do that a goat can do is stand on its hind legs. Come here, boy. Come on. Yeah, come on over here. I'll give you a pet. Come on over here. Come on. Yeah, you're a good-looking dog. Come on over here, buddy. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah, Greg's going to give you a pet on the head. Come on. Yeah, come on. Good boy. Uh, he's a little bit shy of this camera, I think. <laughs> he's usually up here just licking on my hand. Come on. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Come on. 
We just did a patty move too, and they're always a little amped on a patty move. Come on, good boy. Yeah, there you go. There you go, yeah. You just love a good licking on the hands, don't you? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, come on up there. Yeah, that's a good boy. Boy, he's got a soft tongue. That's a good looking dog. He's about uh, 10 months old, and we got two litter mates to him. Uh, they're already sold. Um, well, he's, matter of fact, he's sold too. We have a hard time keeping dogs in here because everybody wants a good trained guardian dog, and I don't blame you. You know, you got something killing your sheep. You got predators, you better have a guard dog, or it's going to be ugly out there. Um, it's not a matter of if the animals are going to come and kill your sheep, the predators. They will. It's just when. And it's a whole lot better to uh, stop the killing before it ever gets started. Just have something out there barking. And, you know, there's people that are asking about donkeys and llamas and all that. You know, some people have luck with them. Um, and that's, that's the route I was going. I was going to get a llamas because they could eat the grass. You didn't have to worry about the dog feed. But here's the deal. Um... Really good friend of mine, old, old uh, rancher, gave me a horror story about, you know, he had some llamas, and one night, he had, I believe it was around five to six hundred ewes, and they, they went away one night and came back the next morning, stayed in town overnight to a picture show, came back the next morning, there was 350 dead sheep, dead and, and ripped to pieces, and the llamas, he has quite a few llamas in there with him. They were up in the barn hiding. So there was a pack of dogs came in there and actually ripped those sheep apart. And the llamas, they just protected their own hide. They took off running and got in the barn. And the last thing that rancher told me is, Greg, you know how many bags of dog feed I could have bought for 350 dead sheep? I'm like, probably a whole lifetime's worth. He goes, yep. So if you're going to guard predators, he said... Put something in your flock that's got fangs. Because that's what they're guarding against. They're guarding to get something that's got fangs out there. It's going to rip, you know, rip your sheep up. By golly, put a white sheep out there that's got fangs in it. That's what they look like. Okay? That's what you want. And a llama can't bark. By God, these things, by golly, these things can. And you know what? Barking's about all it takes. Just a lot of barking at night. Our dogs just bark and bark and bark. If you pull up to that road out there in the dark, they will bark and bark like you are the worst predator in the world. They just absolutely bark at anything that's out of the ordinary. And that's what you want. You just want a lot of barking. Disrupts the predators, freaks them out. And they go find a rabbit or a mouse or a squirrel. Something kind of wild. So with that, uh, the tree swallows are out this morning swooping around. Those of you all new to the channel, welcome. Uh, on the way out, if you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button. And we're going to be covering more and more about the spring flush and how we're handling the different herds to make it through to the summer. And we, we're going to be having some really fast growth here in about two weeks. And so we're kind of prepping for that. Folks, everyone have a great day. Stay safe out there. And uh, we'll see you down the road.